Hello students, um, welcome back to the session. So in this session, we will be uh, learning about what do you mean by dual nature of matter. So before going to this concept, so let us understand uh, or let us uh, recall uh, one more important concept that is what we call as the dual nature of light. See, if I consider certain phenomena that as interference of light, diffraction of light and polarization of light. So if I consider these phenomena, so these phenomena can be explained only if I consider that light travels in the form of a wave. Right. So that is if I consider that is light travels in the form of a transverse wave we can explain the phenomena such as interference of light diffraction of light and polarization of light now we have also seen phenomena such as photoelectric effect and compton effect so these two phenomena clearly tells us that is only if I consider that is light is made up of small particles or very small particles that is what we call it as the photons okay so there is nothing but that is light is made up of uh, particles so if I consider that is light cons uh, light is made up of only uh, particles so then only we can explain the phenomena of photoelectric effect or the Compton effect that is the interaction of light with the matter that is with any uh, matter so it clearly shows that light is consisting of small particles that is what we call it as the photons or it consists of the particle nature see uh, from this we can see that light does not have any one perfect nature neither it is showing uh, wave nature continuously or neither it is showing uh, the particle nature continuously so it is showing both the nature so depending upon the situation so light uh, sometimes behaves as waves and uh, sometimes it behaves as a particle so we can say that uh, light has the dual nature right uh, so <coughs> if you consider the manifestation of the universe so that is universe is made up of only two quantities one is it is made up of matter and it is made up of energy okay since energy that is light has dual nature then why can't this matter possess also that is why can't the material particle or the matter possess the dual nature so that was the hypothesis that was uh, uh, foot for foot for by the uh, scientist by name Louis de Broglie so he was the person okay so we, we who realized whether the uh, material particle which is having already particle nature why can't this possess uh, the wave nature why because we have seen that uh, nature itself has a symmetry that is uh, there is there is only two entities which is uh, where the universe is made up of one is the wave uh, there is one is the energy and the other is the matter so universe is made up of only these two things and einstein also shows that shows that from his uh, special theory of relativity that is they are interconvertible that is energy can be converted into matter and matter can be converted into energy so by using these two ideas that is nature follows a symmetry that is it is made up of only two entities and they are interconvertible by einstein's mass energy relation so we can interpret okay so that is uh, when energy is having dual nature definitely matter also should have a dual nature so this hypothesis was put forth by a scientist by name Dewey, uh, Louis de Broglie. So he, what is the concept uh, according to him? That is, uh, what does Louis de Broglie hypothesis say means? See, whenever we have any material particle, so uh, where m is its mass, and if it is moving with a velocity v, so whenever this particle is moving in this direction, so it should be associated with certain waves, or this particle which is in motion will be. Um, associated with certain waves so this is what we call it as the de Broglie waves got it students or 
this de broglie waves is also called as the matter waves so this is a concept of, of today's that is dual nature of matter so that is what is dual nature of matter let us recall once again see we already know that matter that is a material particle is having a particle nature already uh, in existence so when this is in motion okay moving with a certain velocity so this particle which is in motion so it will be associated with the wave so this is what we call it as the dual nature of matter so there is already material particle has the uh, matter as a particle nature so when it starts moving it will be associated with the waves so this is what we call it as dual nature of matter right so this uh, concept is what we call it as matter waves or sometimes it is also called as uh, uh, de Broglie waves okay so now let us define what is what do you mean by de Broglie waves or what do you mean by matter waves so that is the wave nature the wave nature associated with matter or material particle in nature sorry it is in motion so the wave nature associated with matter or material particle in motion so is what we called as the de Broglie waves or it is also known as the matter waves okay so this is the concept which was uh, given by uh, Louis de Broglie so where it was a basic of the uh, quantum application okay or this equation can also be written as the waves associated by the material particle material particle in motion are called matter waves or de Broglie waves so any one of the definition is correct so we can utilize any uh, one definition that is required for us so now let us uh, we have seen that it is uh, associated with a wave that is whenever material particle is in motion so it will be associated with the wave so now let us see what will be the wavelength for this uh, particular wave that is associated whenever the material particle will be is in motion now let us uh, obtain an expression for the de Broglie wavelength okay so now let us start with the basic particle so that is let us consider a photon okay which is having a uh, mass m and let us consider that is this particular photon is moving with a velocity c where c is nothing but the speed of light why because uh, uh, all the photons will be traveling with a speed uh, nearly equal to uh, speed of light so therefore let us consider there is m is the mass of the particle there is a photon and uh, let its velocity be equal to c then according to uh, einstein's uh, mass energy relation according to einstein's mass energy relation so that is uh, e is equal to mc square so we can see that uh, that is we know that uh, the energy and mass are interconvertible so according to einstein's mass energy relation i can write the energy associated with this photon e is given by e is equal m into c square okay so let us take this as equation number one and also in the starting of the quantum mechanics uh, we have seen the uh, what is that uh, planck's quantum theory okay so according to Planck's quantum theory according to Planck's quantum theory there is the energy associated okay uh, with the photon okay is given by the equation E is equal to h into nu so where we know that uh, nu is equal to c by lambda so and h is the Planck's constant and uh, c is the speed of light so i'll take this as equation number two so now from equation one and from equation two we can see that left hand stars are same 
so therefore equate for right hand side so that is h into c divided by lambda is equal to m into c square so here we have one c and another c gets cancelled and we can write that is h divided by lambda is equal to m into c or we can write lambda is equal to h divided by m into c so this is the expression for the de broglie wavelength of a photon and we can write this equation as also lambda is equal to h divided by p where p will be equal to m into c where it is known as the momentum of photon okay so now keeping this equation that is lambda is equal to h divided by p okay so let us uh, understand what is how it can be applied to a material particle see here we have applied uh, this particular concept that is the concept of de broglie wavelength uh, for a photon now let us consider some material particle which is in motion which is not uh, that is exactly moving with the speed of light why because uh, no other particle in the universe uh, travels with a speed nearly equal to speed of light so if by uh, writing its momentum okay so we can calculate the uh, de broglie wavelength associated with the material particle in motion so just now we have uh, obtained an equation that is lambda is equal to h divided by p uh, as the de broglie wavelength associated with the uh, photon okay so where p is its uh, moment now let us consider any material particle okay so material particle of mass m moving with the velocity moving with the velocity v now the momentum of this particular particle can be written as p is equal to m into v so where p is the momentum of the material particle m is its mass and v is its velocity so therefore now if i write this particular equation as lambda is equal to h divided by p so where p is nothing but the momentum of the particle that is equal to m into v so now this particular equation that is lambda is equal to h divided by mv will get you the de broglie wavelength of de broglie wavelength of material particle in motion so lambda is equal to h divided by m into v so this is what we call as the de broglie wavelength of material particle in motion so now we have seen what do you mean by uh, the expression for the de broglie wavelength now from this uh, relation we can understand that see h is a planck's constant right so if h is planck's constant then we can write that is h is inversely proportional to the mass of the particle that is more is the mass of the particle so higher is its momentum so higher is its momentum means smaller is the wavelength so this is the important reason why don't we observe the de broglie wavelength in our daily life for example if we consider any material particle which is having a mass of 1 kg and this particle is moving with a velocity of 1 meter per second okay so then what will be its uh, wavelength can you imagine see uh, Planck's constant value is 6.625 into 10 to the power of minus 34 divided by now if we calculate the momentum for these two it will be 1 uh, kg meter per second right so if I substitute it here you will get lambda is 6.625 into 10 to the power of minus 34 meter okay so that means that uh, the de Broglie wavelength is approximately 6.625 uh, into 10 to the power of minus 24 Armstrong so very smaller value very smaller value so hence we will not be able to see the de Broglie wavelength in our daily life why because more is the momentum for the particle so lesser will be the wavelength why because we can see that that is from this equation uh, that is as the momentum increases h is a Planck's constant so lambda will definitely decrease so more is the uh, what we say that uh, momentum so lesser will be your uh, wavelength okay so hence we will not be able to see the uh, de broglie wavelength even though the particle 
which is in motion have certain uh, de Broglie waves associated with them. So we are not able to see the de Broglie wavelength in our daily life. Why? Because of its very smaller wavelength, we will be not able to see the de Broglie wavelength uh, in our daily life. So this is the first uh, point to be remembered. And the second point to be remembered is, see, we know that if from the above equation, that is lambda is equal to h divided by m into v. So if v is equal to 0, then lambda will be equal to h divided by 0, which is equal to infinity. Anything divided by 0 will be infinity. That means if the particle is at rest, what do you mean by v is equal to 0? So v is equal to 0 means the particle will be at rest, right? So that is any particle which is at rest, so will not be able to have its de Broglie wavelength. And at the other hand, if v is equal to infinity, then lambda is equal to zero. So these two points also had to be remembered. Hence, while defining the definition for the de Broglie wavelength, we'll use a particular word that is the waves associated with the material particle in motion. So if it is at rest, you can observe, you cannot observe the de Broglie wavelength. It means that wavelength is equal to infinity. It means if you are having a crust here then another crust will be at a distance which is equal to infinity right so which is impossible okay so therefore material particle if it is in motion then only will be able to get your uh, de Broglie wavelength so this is the second point to be remembered <coughs> sorry and third uh, point to remember is see it is independent of charge that is lambda is equal to h divided by m into v is independent of charge so it does not contain any charge of the body hence de Broglie wavelength of a particle is independent of independent of charge of particle. Okay and uh, that is de Broglie wavelength are not electromagnetic in nature. Why? Because all the electromagnetic waves will be moving nearly with a speed equal to speed of light. So another uh, property of this or another char important characteristics of this de Broglie wavelength is they are not electromagnetic. They are not electromagnetic because they do not move with the velocity equal to speed of light. So this is another uh, important characteristics of the de Broglie wavelength. And if any particle is moving with a velocity nearly equal to speed of light, then relativistic mass will come into effect. That is relativistic mass is given by uh, m is equal to m0 in, divided by square root of uh, 1 minus v square divided by c square where m0 is its uh, rest mass. So then at the place of uh, uh, mass in this equation, we have to replace it by relativistic mass. So these are about uh, the de Broglie waves. That is what I mean by de Broglie waves and what are the important uh, expression for the de Broglie wavelength and what are the important characteristics that can be drawn from the uh, equation of the de Broglie wavelength. Now let us um, move on to the next part of the de Broglie wavelengths. So here we will be dealing with the different forms of de Broglie wavelength. So we know that the de Broglie wavelength is given by lambda is equal to h divided by m into v. Now let us consider an electron of mass m moving with a velocity v. Now if this particular electron is accelerated with a certain potential difference, okay, so let uh, v be the potential difference with which the electron is accelerated. So this electrons will gain a kinetic energy due to its acceleration. So <coughs> it is given by kinetic energy is equal to half m v square. Now this kinetic energy that is gained by the electron will be equal to v into e. That is nothing but the potential energy of the electron. So therefore I can replace this half m v square that is kinetic energy is equal to the energy gained by the electron when it is accelerated by a certain potential difference. 
So I'll take this um, to this uh, this side. So therefore, it becomes m into v square is equal to two into v into e. Okay. So multiply by m on both the sides. Now it will be m into m m square v square is equal to two times m into v into e. Now I'll write this equation in the form m into v the whole square is equal to two into m into v into e. Or m into v is equal to square root of 2m v into e. So now we have the expression for m into v as square root of 2m v into e. So therefore, substitute in this equation, we get lambda is equal to h divided by in the place of m into v, we are going to replace it m into v into capital V into e. So this is the one of the form of uh, de Broglie wavelength that is lambda is equal to h divided by uh, square root of 2m v into e. Okay. So now if I uh, substitute the mass of electron, charge of electron and the Planck's constant for electron the de Broglie wavelength can be written as 12.27 divided by square root of v Armstrong. Okay. So this is only for electron. If I if you substitute in this particular equation okay if you substitute the mass of uh, proton and uh, charge of uh, proton so the de Broglie wavelength for proton can be written as lambda is equal to that is 0 0.286 divided by square root of v Armstrong so with what potential difference you are accelerating it okay so if you substitute that particular value of uh, potential you will get the de Broglie wavelength associated with that particular particle okay so uh, this is one of the form and uh, similarly you can write it for uh, uh, deuteron why because neutron is a, a ch chargeless particle so we cannot uh, substitute the charge of proton as zero here then it will be completely meaningless equation so therefore you can write it for deuteron so for deuteron you have a lambda is equal to 0 0.202 uh, dividing by square root of uh, v Armstrong. Okay, so this is for uh, deuteron. And similarly, you can write it for alpha particle as lambda for alpha is equal to 0 0.101 divided by square root of v Armstrong. So these are the de Broglie wavelengths for uh, different uh, particles, and this is one of the form of the uh, de Broglie uh, wavelength. So this is the first form. Let us consider this as the first form. So if the second form is if I consider just any uh, material particle in motion, so the kinetic energy of that particular material particle which is having a mass m and moving with a velocity of v, so then the kinetic energy associated with the material particle will be given by half mv square. So I can, I'll write just write this kinetic energy as energy, so this is equal to half mv square. So if I send this to this side, it will be 2 into e is equal to m into v square. Now multiply by m on both the sides so that you get 2 into m into e is equal to m square into v square so we get m into v the whole square is equal to square root of 2 m into e so sorry this must be this like this okay so m into v uh, is nothing but given by the equation 2 m e okay so we have the expression for de Broglie wavelength as lambda is equal to h divided by m into v so lambda is equal to h divided by m into v is uh, square root of uh, 2m into e. So this is another form of uh, the de Broglie wavelength. So this is one form that is lambda is, equal to, lambda is equal to h divided by square root of 2m v into e is one of the form of equation of the de Broglie wavelength and lambda is equal to h divided by square root of uh, 2m into e. So this is the two forms of uh, de Broglie wavelength. Now let us look at the third form of the de Broglie wavelength that is <coughs> if we have any material particle in thermal equilibrium with a temperature of T okay so that is at temperature T so then the energy due to thermal equilibrium can be written as 3 by 2 kT so where uh, 3 uh, k is nothing but the Boltzmann constant and uh, uh, T is nothing but an absolute temperature. So <coughs> we have the equation for lambda de Broglie wavelength for any material particle with energy E. So that can be written as lambda is equal to 
heads divided by square root of 2m into e. So if I substitute this particular e value in this equation, we get lambda is equal to h divided by square root of 2m. In the place of e, we have a 3 by 2 kt. So this 2 and this 2 gets cancelled. So lambda is equal to h divided by square root of 3m kt. So this is another form of the de Broglie b wavelength. So moving on further, let us uh, list out what are the characteristics of uh, matter waves. What are the characteristics of matter waves? So matter waves cannot be observed. So why? Because uh, I have given the explanation for it. There is whenever any material particle will be moving or any macroscopical object will be moving. So it will be its mass and velocity will be a little bit slightly higher. So therefore the de Broglie wavelength will be very smaller. So therefore we can say that uh, matter waves cannot be seen by the naked eye. So, but you can measure it definitely for microscopic objects we can measure the uh, or to say uh, we can measure for microscopic objects we can measure the de Broglie wavelength so there is we can uh, uh, mention the characteristic as there is waves associated with there is matter waves of micro particles or microscopic particles can be measurable so for example if you measure the de Broglie wavelength of electron so you can usually measure it why because the mass and uh, uh, mass is very less for uh, electron and definitely its uh, momentum will be small so therefore you can measure the uh, uh, matter waves that is the de Broglie wavelength associated with the uh, electrons so not only for electrons for proton uh, for deuteron alpha particle for any particle that is microscopic particle we can measure so as i said there is matter waves associated matter waves associated with my my sorry microscopic particles cannot be measured Okay, so this is the third characteristics and uh, we can see that they are not electromagnetic in nature that is matter waves are not electromagnetic in nature. So EM is the short form electromagnetic in nature. Why? Because it doesn't move with the speed nearly equal to uh, the speed of light. Okay, so now another important uh, uh, point to be discussed in the characteristics of matter waves is that velocity of matter waves velocity of matter waves will mainly depend on the velocity of the material particle and it is also dependent on what we say that uh, momentum of the particle so this is one of the important point and uh, next point is see uh, matter waves uh, they can uh, travel even in vacuum so therefore they are not uh, uh, mechanical waves so those waves which do not require any uh, material medium for its propagation so we call such a waves as uh, mechanical uh, sorry non mechanical waves so and those which require the material medium for its propagation is called as mechanical waves and those waves which do not require any material medium for its propagation so they are called as uh, non mechanical waves okay so this is one other uh, point to be important point uh, to be uh, discussed is see uh, we can see that not only for uh, what is that uh, charged particle so for also neutral particles uh, we can uh, see that there, there is a presence of uh, uh, matter waves that is matter waves are associated with moving particles along with charged as well as neutral particles so for all these things that is it whether the charged body or uncharged body so we'll be having the 
matter waves associated with why because they, they will be having definitely certain mass and if it moves with a certain velocity so therefore definitely uh, they will be associated with the uh, matter waves okay so now next uh, uh, point is the phase velocity of matter waves phase velocity of matter waves can be greater than speed of light so but remember that here not we are saying that velocity of material particle is greater than speed of light don't confuse with the um, velocity of the material particle here we are saying the phase velocity of matter waves where we'll be discussing about the phase velocity in our next videos so phase velocity of matter waves will be of course always greater than the speed of light we have the proof for it so which will be discussing in the next upcoming uh, videos so this is about uh, the different uh, characteristics of the de broglie wavelength so in the next uh, upcoming videos so we'll be uh, dealing with uh, the experimental proof for the uh, matter waves that is the existence of matter waves according to de broglie de broglie has given us only the theory that is whenever any material particle will be in motion it is definitely associated with the material uh, that is matter waves but we need the proof also right so therefore we'll be discussing about different experiments uh, how did that is whether the matter waves really possess uh, the wave nature that is material particles really possess the wave nature or not okay so thank you very much uh, for being here in my channel and see you in the next video uh, thank you for any more uh, notifications so please uh, subscribe and share the videos if you like thank you